So this is why I don't see a lot of hope for the messianic world in terms of academia. As much as they try, they're never gonna they're never gonna make it to be able to debate a first year yeshiva student, the after high school yeshiva student, unless you can think of somebody. <laughs> okay, L let's be real here. Are you saying that there's no one? Like, you don't even think that some of the arguments that I bring forth aren't worthy of at least giving an ear or two? Not everybody is like educated to the level of Michael Brown. I mean, obviously, but you have to consider Michael Brown, while he may be s extremely educated and has, you know, degrees in uh, Semitic language, he's still an event. I mean, he still believes like, like a modern day Christian. He just happens to have Jewish blood, according to him. That itself should be enough to show that if he doesn't feel that Messianic Judaism has enough to stand on its own, that he even reverts to just traditional evangelical tactics. No, he <laughs> actually truly believes that one does not have to keep the Torah. He really believes that. And it's not because, like, did you not see his post today? I shared it. Like, it's whack. Never I understand. That. I don't agree with Michael Brown, but I think that Michael Brown being that he's one of the more knowledgeable Christians out there, knowing the Hebrew, he himself can even balance the whole notion of being a full Torah keeper and believing in Yeshua. That should lead other followers in Yeshua to believe that, you know what, one shouldn't have to balance the two. One should take one and drop the other. That's the only way it works. Preconceived notions can really mess with someone's theology, regardless of how smart they are. I, I know some really smart people that if they just get out of their own way, they would really advance in theology. And I think that's Michael Brown. He mm -hmm. is he is really hung his hat on. That's the hill he's going to die on. And he does so because he he, you know, he has to he feels like he has to do that in order to glorify Jesus and so on and so forth and mm -hmm. fall before Jesus and Look, I do have my theories about it. For example, I've made the statement in the past that I think that a Kabbalist, someone who the bulk of what he teaches comes from mysticism, Kabbalah, whatever, in my opinion, they wouldn't stand a chance against a knowledgeable messianic in a debate or a discussion just because he's going to use that against them. But that's not who I'm really talking about here or comparing them to here. Mainly because I consider a Kabbalist as lost as a Messianic Jew. And yes, I consider them both Jewish, just foolish. But I think that the reason the most knowledgeable Messianic Jew cannot overcome a mediocre Torah Jew or mediocre rabbi in a debate is because virtually anything you study in Messianic Judaism has to begin and end with Yeshua. And yes, in the long run, that does stunt your growth. You can never hop into a class about shotness or Basavachalov without having to input the Messiah. And yes, many Jewish groups do the same thing with their Rebbes or their ideology. I've heard of many Messianics who've converted to Judaism and have gone to Israel to learn in Yeshiva with the assumption that they're going to come back and rock the Jewish world and cause all these Orthodox Jews to turn back. And it never happens. Why? Because when they actually enter Yeshiva, they end up dropping Messianic Judaism because they start realizing that, you know what, they've been taking baby steps all along and now they're finally given meat. They're allowed to run. I'm just telling you, this is the way it's typically been. This is why the vast majority of the people who, and I've heard stories of Messianic Jews who convert to basically lie their way through the Rabbanut and actually move to Israel and learn yeshiva, they typically never end up fulfilling their plan of actually being able to convert Jews because they end up dropping Messianic Judaism. Do you know of any other person? Is there someone out there? I mean, think about it. There must be over a million Messianics in the world, or at least in America. Why isn't there just one who is on the level of probably the lowest rabbi on YouTube? When the reason I say YouTube is because we could relate to YouTube. Most Orthodox Jews don't even have YouTube. I'm just saying, for some reason, once they get to the level, they always drop Messianic Judaism. I'm always looking for people to discuss Torah with, and I think it makes me look better when the person I'm speaking to is very educated, if he's Messianic. But they're just hard to find. Yeah. You know, why is well, that? I why? Because most of them are glorified Christians. They, unfortunately, they find out that they have Jewish blood and all of a sudden that becomes a big thing for them. And but can you think of one, just one person? I mean, I'm not trying to brag, but I feel like I'm fairly educated. I'm keep knocking me down here, but I feel like I'm. 
I don't want to insult you. I mean, you're my Go friend. Ahead. Like I'm legit opening myself up for it, but like I'm the. I'm trying to leave you out of the conversation. I'm just saying, why aren't there messianics out there who are fluent in Hebrew, like at least even Mishnaic Hebrew, Torah Hebrew? I'm not saying conversational Hebrew, who made their way through the yeshiva systems and came out saying, okay, I learned three years or four years in yeshiva and I'm back and now I'm going to win the world for Yeshua. Now there's people like Itzak Shapira. This guy did not grow up Orthodox. Most Jews in Israel who believe in Yeshua are not religious and did not grow up religious. The thing is in Israel until the last, I think the last 10 years, there was only Orthodox. The whole Master T movement is a new thing. The conservative movement in Israel is new. So even if you grew up secular, the synagogue you went to for a simcha or even for the high holidays was always an orthodox shul so it's easy to say that i grew up orthodox like he says he grew up as a secular jew and most jews who believe in yeshua in israel are not messianic they're traditional christians they don't work people like if you see these videos that video i think stands with israel or one israel whatever these are secular jews i mean they're secular jews in the sense not secular i'm sorry they're non-observant jews these aren't guys with keepers if they put on a keepers because they're trying to talk to an orthodox jew but they're typically people like michael brown because they almost have a distaste for the commandments and that's what drew them to something different to begin with. Something that didn't remind them of what they disliked with people with black hats and beards. It's not like people from South America or the United States when they come to Messianic Judaism, they grow their beard, have their pale long and they'll, they'll walk into McDonald's and be like, hey, don't put any cheese on my hamburger because I'm an Orthodox Jew, you know? They're gonna end up dropping it anyways. This is just the way it typically is, unless what they're promoting is not a Torah-based religion, but just straight Christianity. Michael Brown's never had to lie to learn something. His education on the Talmud and Judaism is completely academic from a secular perspective. I've spoken to guys who call me up and tell me that they go to an Orthodox synagogue and they, they tell the synagogue that they're not Messianic, although they are Messianic, so they can learn with them. Right. Didn't, didn't you debate this one guy from Texas that um, was Messianic? Um, this was yeah, it's his name. It's like Shapira. No, not it's not him. Someone else. Um, they have like a congregation in Texas, and uh, in his picture that you have in the video, he kind of looks orthodox. Um, uh, Sean Griffin? No. Uh, what's the other guy? Travis something? I don't know. Sean Griffin, so everyone knows, is definitely not in Judaism. He's also not prestigious, so you don't have to feel bad. You're not the only one. Bro, I'm, I'm not feeling bad. I'm just trying to twist your arm. <laughs> I'm like really trying to twist your arm here. Uh, his name is uh, Rabbi Benyahu. Benyahu. Yeah, you debated him a while back, maybe a year and a half ago. And I remember he um, claimed that he was from a congregation in, um, in Texas somewhere. And he oh, you're totally oh, right, right, right. Lapid. Yeah, he has a long beard and a kippa and a... Yeah, yeah. He went to Chile. He looks I mean, he looks it. And he is by orthodox standards. I mean, he I mean, he's very religious in terms of keeping the oral law and the written law absolutely. As a matter of fact, I think that's how we were talking about the rabbinic law when we were discussing it. He works for Lapid or he did. He was one of their missionaries in South America. No, I'm not saying that people don't look it and can't defend themselves. <laughs> They're not uh no, I'm just <laughs> This is why like, I left myself out of the mix. I mean, I talk to people, but I'm saying, why aren't these guys trying to debate? Well, I mean, who does debate Messianics online? Tony Most Singer doesn't. He debates well, evangelical Jews, but he doesn't debate Messianic. Well, like, I don't think Tony Singer has ever debated a Messianic Jew. Uh -huh. Um, I, I think he's debated a Jew that...